have to, excuse me, one of the things that we have to remember is, is that God wants us free. You all know that? So many times we fall into a just go to church, touch the church base, and go home. And our lives have little uh, semblance of victory, little semblance of, of deliverance. Because the greatest thing that the devil does is convince people that he doesn't exist. The greatest thing he does is convince you that life is simply accidental, that it's just fate and things just happen. And we just kind of go through life fighting one battle to the next battle. We go through life fighting our finances and then we fight the health issues and then we fight the relationship and the job. We're just going through and we're just doing this and we're just taking it as part of life. And the real deal is, is that that's the trick of the enemy because those things are exactly what the devil puts in your way to keep you from walking in your destiny. And your destiny is what the plan is that God has for you. What does God have for you? God said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it what? More abundantly. And what you are doing, the stronghold, y'all stay with me here. I think I'm, I, I messed up tomorrow's Sunday school trying to deal with some spiritual things. And I guess maybe that's just where my mind is right now is that we do not understand sometimes how the devil is fighting. Like even when we talk about strongholds, we're not talking about no spooky stuff, no woo. We're not talking about that. Strongholds are things that the devil puts in your mind or having you distracted about that you're not walking in the destiny that God has for you to have. That you're not having the victory and the joy and the peace that God wants you to have. And what the real deal is, you have become complacent in going from one battle and fighting one thing after another. And that's not God's will. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, that's not God's will. It's not God's will for you to be so distracted and so bummed and so disgusted that you don't have no joy, you don't have no peace, you don't have victory in your life. All of those things are the strongholds of the devil, of the devil. And I want to uncover them. You all stop thinking that that's just, oh, that's just how life is. You know, and you just go from one thing to the another. Why? Because the devil comes in here to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not just coming in and, and, and all of a sudden you're going to see a little man with horns. and That's not it. What he's doing is taking you off of what God wants you to have. He's even gotten you to the point that you are complacent to when you read the word of God and you know what God is telling you to do, that you are satisfied with not having what you know for a fact that God declares that you should have. That's the bondage, be honest with you. That's the strongholds. Those are the yokes that God needs to have us bound. Because some people are bound physically. They go from one problem to another. You even, and I'm not knocking my brother, but, you know, you can think about tomorrow. He said, well, I got diabetes. And the first thing he said is, is, well, that's diabetes. Well, we ain't got to take diabetes. We don't have to take that, brothers and sisters. The devil will put that up on our lives. Why? To distract you and make you feel like it is okay. All of this poverty that we're fighting. We'll look around and say, well, that's just how life goes. No. God is a blesser of people. God is a lifter of those that are his people. That's why his children, he wants to bless them. He wants to make them the head and not the what? Tail. He got people going around and they're satisfied in their mental condition. They're satisfied with not having peace. They're satisfied with being in anguish. They're satisfied with being stymied because their mind won't formulate energy, won't formulate plans to go forward and to move to the next level. Those are the strongholds that the devil is trying to get you in. Do y'all hear me? 
I, I, I'm going to preach it anyway. Y'all can take it or not. We got emotional bondages. We got emotional things. People don't know how to have friends. People don't know how to love deeply. They don't know how to, how to embrace. And, 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 and they almost got all kinds of phobias. They can't go outside, can't stay inside. Why? Because it's a stronghold. And what we're doing, we're leaning towards psychologists and psychiatrists rather than recognizing that God told us that he came to give you what? A sound mind and to give you power. It is amazing how the devil has gotten us to just acquiesce to all of these things that God absolutely declares that he came to free us from. And then not only is it the world, but it is us in the church have gotten to the point that we act like these things are okay. But we've got to recognize that God comes and we need to get to the point that we're ready to break free. Everybody say break free. You see, I, I, I'm, I might be short because I, I, I can't get my notes together, but I want to minister to you. Minister, in, by the way, means to serve. And that's like deacon. Deacon means to serve. I want to serve. What do I want to serve? I want to serve you up the truth. I want to serve you the process or the recipe from going from one level to the next. Let's stop being in church and be powerless. When the God that we serve is a powerful God. He's an all-powerful God. And when we are his children, we are, have the blessing. The Bible even tells us. He said, greater work shall you do than those that you saw Jesus do. Greater works. But we have gotten to a third millennium, 21st century mindset that we just accept stuff. We just accept how the devil is making our minds, making our body. We just accept because he puts symptoms upon us. We are a powerless people because God really wants us to what? Have no more what? Bondage. As you look into this portion of scripture here, one of the things that is noteworthy is that it's in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is in the synoptic Gospels, meaning that they see together. And what it is talking about is saying the maniac, maniac, you know, the person that was out of control and he was in gathering. He was in gathering, that's where he was from, but even in gathering, they couldn't deal with him. They allowed him to go out there and live among the what? Among the tombs, among the people that were dead. Let's take it and go a little bit deeper. Everybody use their fingers like this and let's go a little deeper. Thank you, Sister Quita, because some people, they so big and they, they won't even do it. But I'm trying to tell you, sometimes we got to go a little deeper. There you go, Shake it, do both of them. Shake it, Shake it back there swimming though. <laughs> what we're talking about let's go a little deeper guys the word of God is not put here for me to entertain you it's not put in here for me to have rhyme and rhythm and jump and shout and we nothing wrong with that I enjoy jumping and shouting do y'all hear me but it's also here so that we can understand the mind of God but sometimes it is not because you don't get it all because of our casualness in reading, our casualness in, in, in spending time with God. Because the devil absolutely has fooled you to believe that this is just life. That's just how life is. When you are born again, you're supposed to have what? A new life, new victories. New joy. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become what? New. Then why are you dragging all that mental, physical, emotional bondage with you over into the church? And then we in the church, be honest with you, we're not setting people free quick enough or powerful enough. When it talks about they were from gathering, let's look into this a little bit deeper, and I'm halfway through right now. Is that Gad was one of the 